Hey everyone, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital with a check-in uh, ahead of the BOE rate hike decision, which will take place on August 3rd. Today is August 2nd and it's around 7 a.m. New York time. So expectations are for the Bank of England to raise rates by 25 basis points to five and a quarter percent. There are odds here of uh, potentially 50 basis points. However, these odds have been diminishing over time. And so you're seeing that it's more likely to be a 25 basis point rate hike decision at one point it was seen that they were going to raise by about 50 basis points at this meeting, but those odds have changed pretty dramatically over the last couple of weeks. Additionally, it's worth pointing out that the odds for the terminal rate are also coming down. At one point, markets were expecting a terminal peak rate of about 6.5%, and that's fallen to around 5.75%. And interestingly enough, when we take a look at the British two-year, you'll see that it looks very similar in terms of shape and, and the way that the the market is trading the two-year with the with the expectations for rate hikes from the BOE. So, if for some reason this announcement comes out being, uh, you know, the 25 that's expected, but the forecast um, is for fewer rate hikes than what the market is pricing in, you're going to probably see the two-year two-year gilt uh, trade lower here. And in fact, when we look at the chart of the two-year gilt, um, you can see that it almost resembles that of a bear flag. Um, and this would be suggestive that perhaps the BOE is going to uh, only not is not going to be as hawkish as previously thought, and you could see the two-year perhaps begin to fade lower, um, and perhaps trade back down to this 475 region, uh, where it's likely to find some support before potentially making a move to go even lower than that. But again, a lot of that's going to be determined on the type of language Andrew Bailey uses tomorrow. We certainly saw, you know, a more um, when it comes from the when it comes from a perspective of central banks, we certainly saw a more of a data dependent approach out of the Fed. That's been the case now for a couple of meetings. ECB sort of backed off its aggressive hawkishness and has more of a, you know, not in the forward guidance business, as Lagarde put it, and is uh, also more in the data dependent. And uh, we had Bank of Japan, which came out last week as well, which raised the uh, trading ban on the 10-year JGB. And it seems likely that you're going to start seeing all these central banks move into this data-dependent mode. I think it's probably because they don't want to create any more excess volatility within the, within the currency markets, given the surprise announcement by the BOJ last week. So it wouldn't be surprising to me to, to see a, a BOE that's more in line with that of the ECB and the Fed and less hawkish than what had been previously expected. And that could be one reason why you're seeing um, this set up in the two-year gilt, which looks pretty um, bearish in terms of rates going down. Now, obviously, if you were to get a, a move above this high of 505, it could you know, perhaps push it towards the upper end of this channel back towards five and a quarter, which would also be a resistance level here, something to watch. So you're going to want to pay very close attention to the type of language. If the language shifts more towards that of the Fed and the ECB, I think it's more likely than not you're going to see the, the two-year move down to four and a quarter. And what that probably means for the 10-year is that you're also going to see the 10-year begin to maybe move down towards four and a quarter. Again, you can see the big rising wedge pattern in the, uh, in the British 10-year. And you can also see that there's a very similar sort of bear flag pattern present in the um, in the British 10 as well, which also would suggest maybe you see a drop in the 10-year back to this 410 region. Now, of course, if you get uh, a more dovish approach or you know statement out of the Bank of England, something more in line with that of the Fed and the ECB, like we spoke about, you could see the you know the British the British pound begin to depreciate. Quite notably here, it did ultimately get up to around 132-ish or so, so it didn't quite get to that 132.5 to 133 section uh, resistance level we have may, have may have mentioned, but we did get pretty close. And uh, this almost looks like a, a pattern of a rising wedge with a throwover. We're now coming back into the rising wedge component, and you can see the big levels of support right here uh, with this trend line. And then, of course, you can see the big levels of support with this trend line. Again, if you were to get a, a less hawkish BOE, something more in line with that of the Fed and the ECB, I think it's more likely than not you're going to see the British pound break support and begin to weaken again back towards 126. 
and ultimately towards 124. Um, and again, you can also see here that the upward momentum that had been witnessed on the pound since really the, the fall uh, has be, is beginning to show signs of weakening and momentum being lost. Um, so again, it looks like there may be a point in time here where you're going to see the odds of the strength going back to the dollar, not towards the British pound. So when you look at the FTSE, you can see there's um, a big downtrend in place here, and here's a secondary downtrend. Here's our support level at 72.50 that held. We've, we've seen a very nice retracement. This is, um, if we go back to uh, this point in time here, and we look, this has just been nothing more than a 61.8% retracement of this entire decline at this point. So uh, tough to say that this is the start of a new leg higher for the, the FTSE at this point. In fact, this looks more, uh, more like a retracement, more like a test of this downtrend that's been in place here at around 77.40 or so. Uh, again, you can see we broke another downtrend here. It's not unusual to see the market, once it breaks the downtrend, come back and retest the downtrend. So would it be surprising to see the FTSE drop back to around 74.60? I don't think that would be surprising at all. And in fact, I, I happen to think that's probably what the most likely outcome is. Uh, rather than trying to test the 77.30 region, only because you know, you're seeing weakness develop in other markets. Uh, Asian markets have been hammered the last night. Uh, you see the, the, the downgrade in, in, in the Fitch rating of the U.S. debt, which I don't think is a terribly important decision. Um, uh, in fact, when you look at the dollar index, the dollar index is trading higher today, which is absolutely uh, the opposite of what I would have expected to see given the downgrade, which tells us that the markets are, are digesting this pretty well. The U.S. 10 years is, is hardly moved today. So again, this is suggestive of the market really looking at this Fitch downgrade as a non-event, at least from the point of view of what bonds are doing currently and what the dollar index is doing currently. So if it is the case that you're just seeing this shift in momentum in equity markets globally, then this is indicative of probably a FTSE that's going to be trading lower in the near term than higher. And again, it likely takes some sort of really strong sound of confidence about the health of the economy from the BOE tomorrow to get the FTSE trading up to the 7740 region and potentially, you know, breaking out and pushing up to 7800 and then 7900. It's more likely than not that I think you're going to see a retest of the 7465 region or so on the FTSE um, by the time things are all said and done. So again, uh, there's a lot of important levels that are coming up right now. Uh, British pound looks like it may be trading lower. It looks like you may see rates begin to move lower. And I think that's indicative of, a, of an equity market that's going to be looking to move lower just because I think you're seeing this change in the approach in terms of monetary policy out of the two major central banks that have already gone FOMC and the ECB. Say so you saw an unexpected shift out of the BOJ, which was leaked just the day before the announcement came to kind of, you know, get the markets prepared for that shift, which tells you that these central banks don't want to create any necessary volatility in the market, which is why you're probably also going to see a BOE that's more similar than not to that of the, um, the Fed and the ECB, at least for this meeting. And then what happens next meeting will be dependent upon the data that we see in the weeks to come. Anyway, hope you have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.